I don't think that our show has ever shied away from talking about the HIV AIDS epidemic. And so it's fascinating that our third season, our final season feels so timely, you know, that these moments happen, that we're once again in the midst of a global pandemic, that we, you know, are now having conversations about police brutality and racism, which are conversations that have, we've always had. It's not like racism just happened yesterday. Um, you know, but we seem to now be a little more engaged in that discourse. Um, again, it's just it's just by chance, I think, that our show happened to decide to address it in our final season and that this all now socially is happening once again. Um, it's, I'm glad that we, you know, decided to go there narratively. Um, and to be quite frank, I think even if we had made the decision to add that into the narrative after the case, like I still would have, you know, I would still defend it and say, I think it's really important that we went there as a show because the reality is that I think Pose has always been a mix of both education and entertainment. And so I think it's great that we get to, or I should say that I get to use my platform as a show creator and as a storyteller to highlight a particular conversation that, you know, hopefully if the audience isn't already engaged in, that they will be in now because of the show. Um, you know, in terms of, of pride and these conversations and the pushback around having police there, I think it's great. I think it's really important. You know, I am someone who is fairly new to um, abolition work, but, you know, I, I'm someone who I don't think that people should be in cages. And I think it's really critically important that we have conversations around where our resources are going. Because the reality, especially as someone who grew up in the Bronx, and specifically I went to uh, Adelaide E. Stevenson High School, uh, you know, near Castle Hill, and it in that Soundview section of the Bronx, and it no longer exists. Like the campus is there, but my high school no longer exists. And I know that I was you know, I was in a school where we had very little resources. And so when you look at, you know, what are the communities, what are the schools that are getting lots of funding versus those that aren't, and then you look at the, you know, graduation rates and you look at, you know, what are the, what are the employment opportunities then to particular communities of people based on, you know, what their, um, you know, education was, I think that those things we need to be having conversations about. We really need to, to investigate that. And so as opposed to putting monies into locking people up, like why are we not taking a step back in a more macro view and saying, let's put more money into, you know, uh, into education. Let's put more money into, um, into the arts. You know, um, I know for me in particular, growing up in the Bronx, uh, in the early 90s in the midst of re-emerging gang violence, what was really life-saving and life-changing for me was joining an after-school program where I had the opportunity to work on a documentary short. So I think there's so many other interventions um, that require monetary resources that we could be looking into as a community, as opposed to putting lots of money into, into law enforcement and, and into creating new prisons. 